lead news anchor conducts a live exclusive interview with Mendoza. He is asked to read out the letter live on air. But the contents are not what anyone was expecting. <laughs> He was enraged. He told us that I don't need this. The letter simply offers an extension to review Mendoza's case instead of his demand for an offer of full reinstatement. The uh, court said, like, no, we can't do that. We have a process. We have to follow a process. It will take us about 10 days. And this kind of pissed him off. And he said, like, oh, I want to be reinstated today. When the negotiation failed, and he, his request for reinstatement will not be given, uh, he's willing to die for that. 46-year-old hostage Joe Chan recalls witnessing the moment that puts Mendoza at fever pitch. I told him, please come down. What if I can uh, convince my boss to to uh, issue an order, not actually reinstating him, but uh, suspending the implementation? And he answered back, told me that, uh, okay. With renewed signs of hope, Colonel Yebra informs his superiors, Mayor Lim and General Maktibai, that Mendoza is willing to accept a partial compromise. But the team failed to reach an agreement on issuing such an order. When the group did not reach an agreement as to whether or not issue said order, Mayor Lim suggested that they all go to Emerald Restaurant to take their dinner. While senior members of the command and negotiation team take their dinner in the nearby Emerald Restaurant, Unknown to the group at the time, the failure to implement this order immediately would have devastating consequences in the hours that follow. Mendoza, continuing to be interviewed on live radio, is now losing his patience and seems to be on the verge of breaking. On live radio, hostage taker Rolando Mendoza continues to shout down the phone to news anchor Michael Rogus and journalist Erwin Tulfo. He felt that he is just being cheated uh, after being nice to them, giving up hostages. He felt like uh, they're, they're lying to him. And he's a cop. He knows that uh, it's a delaying tactic and, and uh, they're tiring him out. So like, no, they can't tire me. I know this crap, he said. Meanwhile, at the command post, there is a new drama unfolding. The hijacker's brother, Gregorio Mendoza, is being detained over his breach of the police cordon earlier in the day, while carrying a firearm and causing a disturbance during negotiations. But when he is led to the police car to be taken away, he collapses to the ground. <laughs> A few moments later, and his son also joins in the tirade. Back inside the bus, Mendoza's rage only grows further as he demands to know why the police are manhandling his brother. But Tulfo is puzzled as to how Mendoza can see what's happening. The anchor, main anchor man, uh, over the radio said, like, oh, what do you want us to do? They're like, well, I want you to tell him to stop uh, beating up my brother and treating him like pig. I mean, and, and, and some members of my family. <laughs> I came to realize later on that I was listening and we can see it in, inside the bus. They're like, I see it here in the bus. They're, they're beating my brother. 
The police plead with the media to stop their live coverage, but the media ignore their requests. This incident would later prove to be the catalyst that pushes Mendoza into a violent killing spree. While police continue their attempts to detain Gregorio, Erwin Tulfo returns to the phone and resumes his conversation with Mendoza. I can hear Captain Mendoza already screaming like, let him go, he's talking in Filipino. You, you guys better let him go, better tell them to let my brother go. He doesn't, he's not into this, he's not part of this, okay? If they want to get me, just me. Leave my, my brother alone, leave my family alone. I swear to God, I'm going to kill everybody in here, in a bus. I will give you five minutes. At that point, Tufo looks for a member of the negotiation team. So the, uh, the uh, main anchorman uh, on the radio told me, like, Erwin, can you do something about this? Can you, can you, uh, can you talk to the ground commander or Yebra? So like, I don't see any Yebra here. I haven't seen him since 4 o'clock where I'm standing at. And I was standing like about 50 meters away behind the bus. With Mendoza making death threats on live radio and with no member of the negotiating team close at hand, Tulfo desperately looks for help. The closest person I was able to uh, I was able to talk to was the deputy ground commander. And I told him, sir, I said, like, uh, Colonel, I think Captain Mendoza uh, is threatening to kill all the hostages if... Uh, the police uh, officers uh, in that station will not stop uh, beating up his brother or arresting him. Immediately, the deputy ground commander makes contact with his superiors, ground commander Matt Tibai and Mayor Lim. Upon hearing the news, they stop their meal and make their way back to the grandstand. Having lost faith in the ability of local authorities to peacefully pacify Mendoza, on board the bus, 46-year-old hostage Joe Chan recalls taking matters into his own hands. Finally, Mendoza's patience breaks and he opens fire in a mad fit of desperation. A tour guide, handcuffed to the door of the bus, is killed by Mendoza. I look at the door of the bus. I saw the first guy that was handcuffed earlier. He just fell. So after those shots, I hear crying, ah, like that, screaming. Then Mendoza reaches Joe Chan last of all. I was, I was shocked. I couldn't believe it. And I said, like I, well, like I said, oh my God, I told you guys, better move. Out of the deadly aftermath, somehow, the driver, Alberto Lubang, manages to break free from his handcuffs and he makes a run for police protection. When the driver escaped from the window, 
and shout it. Kita tayo na, kita tayo na. All of them Muslims, all of them Muslims. And then we thought that Katimingos already shot all the obstacles. As the driver receives medical attention, again, not one of the authorities questions him about the situation on board the bus. Later investigations would cite this as yet another missed opportunity to gain much needed intelligence prior to conducting an assault. The only person police are trying to question is the hijacker's brother, Gregorio. Despite the massacre on board the bus, police are still having trouble in detaining him. For the police authorities, there is now no other option remaining than to launch an assault to kill Mendoza. The Special Action Force, sent by the President, anticipate receiving the final order to launch their assault. But something is wrong. We were just waiting for orders if we will go in or not. A moment later, they learn that the ground commander, General Matibai, has given the go-ahead to send in the Manila police SWAT instead. The directive was for the SAF to be employed. But it seems that along the way, uh, the instructions were not complied with by the ground commander, because the ground commander really called the shots. But I'm, I'm certain that he received that order to employ the SAF. This comes as a surprise to SWAT unit team leader Espinoza. Kasi wala muna international ano yan eh. Wala muna mga foreigner yan. Dapat naman talaga sila. Pero dahil hindi kami binigyan ng order, kami ang pa-open. Confused, the SAF have no choice but to stand back and let the Manila police SWAT take up position instead. Espinoza is briefed by his superior. Siyempre ang hinangat namin na ma-neutralize din siya. Yan lang naman ano. It is 7.37 p.m. at the Quirino Grandstand in Manila, Philippines. Just two months earlier, the Grandstand played venue to President Aquino's ascendancy to the presidency. Now, it has become the scene to a deadly hijacking, as word gets out that hijacker Rolando Mendoza has killed all the hostages aboard a tourist bus. Hostages were being killed, were slaughtered inside, screaming, so I wanted that uh, this guy should be neutralized right away. The Manila police SWAT launch their assault, while up in the grandstand, three snipers take their positions. The first task is to make visual contact with Mendoza. Espinoza leads a team to the front portion of the bus. Heavy rain hampers the SWAT's efforts to get a clear visual inside the bus. They rely on their physical strength and stamina to move around in search of any movement from Mendoza. The SWAT attempt to smash the windows to see clearly inside. But to their surprise, the glass is a lot stronger than they expect. So instead, Espinoza makes an attempt at gaining entry through the main door. A moment later, there is an exchange of gunfire. Tourist guide, and don't 
pintuan. So, paano kung mabuksan ang pintuan? 